Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently with the price action and what I think is likely to happen next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. Help spread the content to more like-minded individuals. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe. If you tap the bell and select all the notifications, you will not miss another video update. Above and beyond those things though, make sure you do join us down in Discord. Discord is the centralized hub of everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Links are in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. So why not go ahead and check it out? Let's jump right down into today's video. We've got some interesting developments with structure. So let's jump right down and kick things off with that one hour time frame. Here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT and uh, we are using Binance uh, as the data source here. Now, what we find ourselves in is this wave four positioning. Okay, we have got our target range. It sits up here at the 1.236 to the 1.618. Uh, you can see that right inside here. I'm just going to put this little yellow box uh, to kind of symbolize that. That's basically 36,789 to 36,000 uh, sorry, 35,789 to 36,630. Okay, that's the range for this fifth wave target. Now, it can, of course, over exceed this. Um, it can uh, potentially turn into an overextension uh, and all that kind of good stuff. Now, inside here, we find ourselves with the potential that we've either got that overextension forming uh, with a diagonal pattern here, a wave two coming down, and then a three, four, and five, and we overextend and we head more out towards kind of 37, 38K. However, the other option is that we find ourselves in a diagonal pattern. Um, and in this particular case, uh, sorry, not a diagonal, a triangle pattern, sorry. Uh, and in, in the case of a triangle, uh, these triangles appear only in two places. Um, in all of Elliott wave theory, right? And they only appear either in a B wave movement or in a wave four movement. There's only two places that a triangle can appear. The technical uh, labeling of a triangle, let me get some empty space here. Um, a triangle is essentially an A, B, C, D, E, okay? And that's what an A, B, C, D, E is used for. Um, and you can see here that it would basically form this kind of sideways continuation pattern, a triangle that kind of goes down. And you can, of course, see a contracting um, triangle like this one, or you could also see it as an expanding, uh, ex expanding triangle. Sorry, I can even talk this morning. Um, and again, that would look more... Uh, like this, um, not with a, uh, let's get into the right kind of way of talking this morning, uh, into an A, B, C, D, E, like say, right? Um, but for the most part, uh, we are going to be looking at this as a uh, triangle that sits inside here. I think that's going to be the best place to kind of place this one. Let's take a look and see what's going on, right? So uh, what we find ourselves is they should contain and only contain three wave movements. So we have a WXY there. Uh, we come up here in a WXY here. We move down in a WXY as well, uh, just inside here. Here, the next one is a smaller WXY going to the upside. And then, of course, we're going to be looking for uh, the unpredictable wave at the very end. Okay, now if I label this up with an A, B, C, D, E, you have your A, your B, your C, your D, and E. Now, E waves can be unpredictable. They can actually exceed the barriers uh, and boundaries of what you would normally expect to see um, from inside your triangle. In fact, an E wave could even be another triangle. And so an E wave is quite unpredictable, but if you can get a good bead on this one, this is the one that's going to give you a good place to kind of find an entry into a long position. Okay, so if I remove all of these three wave structures that you see internally here, uh, you can of course acknowledge that we are looking at an A, B, C, D, E triangle in a fourth wave movement and the fourth wave movement is looking for a projection upwards towards 35,789 to 36,630. I don't know if I've murdered that explanation of one of what's going on. Let me know in the comments below if you think I absolutely murdered that. Um, but for the most part, as you can kind of see here, uh, we're looking for a short D wave here and a potential for an E wave to break on down. Now, one of the things with this that I would not expect is I would not expect us to kind of go down lower than 33,200. Um, so if I were to go long on this, you know that I'm going to be using uh, one of my favorite exchanges. So either OKX or um, Bybit or BitGet, is, which is I generally use BitGet for most of my trades at the moment. 
Um, obviously, all the links for these are in the description below if you are interested in using any of those exchanges. We do, we do help out the channel quite a bit because they are affiliate links. All terms and conditions are in the, uh, the description down below as well. Uh, just make sure you understand the risks involved in trading and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, again, more information in the description below. But if I were to go trading on this, I'm going to use one of those exchanges and I am going to be uh, looking to go long with a stop loss below uh, 33,200. I would probably make this really tight person. Uh, that would be my approach to it. And I'll be targeting out that 1.236 on the high side. Risk reward ratio would be about 6.97, depending on where our entry is on our E-Wave. Um, you can see here, even if I took entry right now, it would be a 1.72, uh, but I expect us to come down a bit. So uh, yeah, we'll have a better entry in my opinion, and then we'll be able to get some really good profit there. Now, ultimately, I'm not a financial advisor. All I can do is give you my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as I personally see it and tell you how I would approach the market as I would normally kind of you know look at these things. Now, obviously, if you do have access to a financial advisor, you should probably consult them and, um, and all that kind of wonderful stuff. So just understand there's a lot of risks associated with leverage-based trading and all that wonderful stuff. So that's kind of the hourly chart. We find ourselves in the triangle. We're looking for um, the move to the upside and all that. So let's go ahead and take this out towards our daily time frame. Our daily time frame here, as you can kind of see, has got this break upwards. Uh, we have see hit the high, uh, which was 35,280. Uh, we'll see are struggling at the moment on the daily time frame. We are looking for a big correction to the downside. I think ultimately we have to finish off that fifth wave movement on the hourly. Once that is done, we are looking for corrections down. Okay. So again, we'll be looking at, um, you know, these fair value gaps, equilibrium as good places to kind of look for um, on this way down. So ultimately looking at breaking lower than $30,000, uh, which may be you know catastrophic to some retail investors who believe now that the only direction that Bitcoin can going is to the upside. We are looking for a nice healthy correction. Um, this healthy correction, I think over the next few months, we'll be taking Bitcoin back down towards 20K, uh, which will be a very healthy area for BTC before we actually get into the bullish market. Uh, again, that might be the the polar opposite of what many retail investors like to hear, but it simply is what I'm looking at. Um, so if I take the stochastic RSI's off, which you can obviously see that we're overbought and we are looking for a correction. The last time that we were kind of up in these kind of major areas here, you can see we were seeing massive moves to the downside. Um, and so we will be looking for corrections to the downside uh, as well with momentum shifting around. Volume wise, this is the biggest indication as to why we are going to see a very healthy correction to the downside. Um, and it's simply this. You can can see here that at the beginning of the year, there was actually volume pushing the price to the upside. Where is the volume now? Okay, we can note that everything else that's been going on here doesn't look natural in the way that there is moves to the upside without any significant volume. Now, what we can do is say that there's a divergence here. We have higher highs in price, but we have lower highs in terms of volume. Okay, these things are the opposites. This tells us that everything that we are seeing here is very short term and is not necessarily natural in the way that it is moved and it's very unnatural and therefore the direction of the move that we should be expecting is a move to the downside. A lot of money has transferred hands though with lots of liquidations occurring and well we can all speculate as to why that may be the case. Ultimately we just take a look at volume profiles and the price action in the way that it has moved it isn't really a bullish environment. In fact this is very much the opposite of what you'd expect from a bullish environment because ultimately it's very definition of a bull market happens to be when demand outpaces that of the supply. We have very little demand coming in as symbolize, uh, as, as, as a symbol of that, we can see the volumes are just non-existent. There is very little demand coming in here. So the, the moves to the upside here, I think, are more to do with market makers and whale manipulation than it has anything to do with uh, the actual volume increasing and pushing the price to the upside. Be very, very cautious here. Okay, this isn't a natural movement in my opinion. Now we can see here that we did have a hidden bullish divergence just down here and we did see that move to the upside. This yellow line, by the way, guys, is the RSI, the relative strength index, not the stochastic RSI, just the relative strength index and is heavily overbought. So we want to be aware that that is not looking strong either. Okay, so on the daily, we're looking bearish. There's no other way of saying it. Uh, taking a look at it from a weekly standpoint, we're almost up in the overbought range as well. Uh, so again, we're not looking 
strong here. If we throw the volumes here, you can really see here on the weekly profile just how bad the volumes are right now. It's not looking strong at all all um, so just be aware that uh, volume profiles are very weak and is a symbol of low volume low demand for BTC even though we have pushed on up overbought obviously will mean a move to the downside uh, over time like I said I'm expecting 20k uh, simply because it is a CME gap and an area that I would expect us to naturally want to move down towards over the next little while ultimately I think that is going to be the last opportunity to get into BTC or or into altcoins on that next pull to the downside and uh, afterwards I am expecting a rather large bull market to come I just think we aren't really going to see that bull market until institutional investors have soaked up a lot of Bitcoin um, from the retail investors that were buying it at much higher prices I do expect us to see about a 30% reduction in retail investors or 20 to 30% reduction in retail investors. That will equate to around a two and a half to three million BTC flood in the market, which essentially will drive the price to, of Bitcoin to the downside. Um, ultimately, uh, we are testing the higher ranges. Uh, obviously, we can see that it's great. Uh, we have taken out the CME gap at $35,000. The next CME gap is uh, at 20,000. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm thinking we have to kind of head and um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below i think i'll wrap this video up right there if you have found it useful and informative smash that like button i do appreciate that if you are new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto until the next one though guys i'll uh, have a fantastic day and i'll catch you in the next one